Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Christy. Um, welcome to our webinar, Engaging Coding and Game Design Solutions for Education. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. We're going to look at the different methods of teaching Game Maker at different stages as students progress through their education. So to the agenda, we'll start with a brief overview of Game Maker and then look at the approaches to teaching game design, including feedback from our teachers following a survey we did in November 2020. We'll then take a look at the different approaches taken for different student age groups. And for each age group, we will move on to the challenges brought about by COVID and how to adjust to home learning. We'll look at the approaches to licensing and privacy, including the licensing support we are providing to all schools during COVID. And then we'll finish up with a QA and how to get your free license. Before we get to the educator resources, I'd like to provide a brief overview of GameMaker Studio 2. First developed in 1999 for use in education. It's an easy to use 2D game making tool. Being 2D is important for learning because it removes much of the complexity associated with 3D and allows for faster progress. Drag and drop or D&D as we sometimes call it through this, through this webinar uh, is a system for non-code development. So students firstly understand the fundamental building blocks of how to code and then can progress to coding when they are ready, letting them progress seamlessly without hitting a wall. Uh, custom language, GML or game maker language. This is a JavaScript like language. It's based on C and is designed to be easy to use for games design and simple to pick up. Game Maker includes an image editor, sprite editor, object editor, and a room editor. It also now includes the sequences animation tool. There's free teacher resources that teach the fundamentals of coding and help students to build their own game step by step. We have a large active community with a forum uh, and social media and beginner tips from pros. We have big studio credibility. Students can see hundreds of real games with many multi-million sellers made with Game Maker. The link here takes you to our showcase with award-winning games. The current iPad game of the year was Hyperlight Drifter, made with Game Maker. Over 1,500 new users register every single day, with 90% of them being beginners. So while Game Maker is a professional tool, it is at the same time a, fund a foundation tool and very accessible. We sent out a questionnaire to our teachers at the start of November 2020. The response. Uh, responses are consistent with when we asked the same questions back in 2019, with planning, individual confidence and learning engagement all scoring more than 75% when it comes to being rated somewhat effective or better. When we asked how effective are games design lessons at teaching the following, you can see the positive results on the slide. And uh, a good one there actually is the uh, teacher student teacher bond. Um, so up, up over 65%, which is cool. Uh, I'm often asked what age Game Maker is taught at, and today we're going to look at approaches taken broadly at ages 12 to 14, 15 to 16, and 17 plus. Here's broadly how teachers approach the teaching of game design from the survey of educators who use Game Maker. As you can see, the teaching of Game Maker is very hands-on. It suits kinesthetic learners. This is probably why we hear that students who struggle to engage in other areas of the curriculum are much more motivated to engage with Game Maker game design lessons. I was recently talking to one of our teachers who provides alternative provision to children who have, been, who have behavioral difficulties and who can't be accommodated in mainstream education. And he was saying the Space Bubbles video tutorial, which are part of the free education materials, are at the right level for his students. There are three approaches to teaching that I'm going to cover in this presentation. First in blue is make a game step by step using the video. This is an approach that solely relies on video tutorials where users build and extend games from no knowledge using drag and drop and then progress into making these games using GML coding. This is more appropriate in home learning situations, out of school, uh, out of school camps and clubs where there is no formal framework needed for learning code. The students are learning the skills in a more hands-on way, so educators may need to provide some structure to what they've learned afterwards using the education classroom materials, and this requires less educator input. Then in orange, making ga a game step-by-step -step with the teacher leading, where the educator provides guidance on teaching of code uh, to fulfill a school curriculum, and this is reinforced with the step-by-step -step tutorials. 
It comes with an assessment structure and, home stru uh, and homework. This is the approach taken by our educator resources and will require the educator to run online tutorials and go through the slides. In green, we have the approach of setting a project for students to interpret. This is generally the approach uh, we see taken with those aged 15 to 16. This is actually the most popular approach and is used in more advanced curricula where students are required to show creativity and practical implementation of programming. For this approach, I will show you the resources that we can provide guidance and inspiration. So this is how teachers evaluate the progress being made by students. Our free tutorials include fully documented teacher and peer evaluation criteria. Assessing progress can be difficult, a difficult part of home learning, and GameMaker enables easy sharing of games so educators can check on progress. In a, pre, uh, <clears throat> in a previous survey, we got some great feedback from educators on how using game design has aided the education process at their school. Uh, where are we? The kids are happier in class. There aren't behavior problems like in other classes. Games require creatives and tech teams to work together with a common goal to solve. While they build games, they also build friendships, learn to overcome hardships and create something meaningful. My students have very much enjoy the game design units that I teach. Personally, I think that game design is effective at improving problem solving, attention to detail and teamwork. The students have learned to solve complex and abstract problems uh, by themselves. The content provides a sufficient challenge and helps develop persistence and attention to detail. It has certainly enabled some students who are otherwise disengaged from the curriculum to re-engage. So what about the students? What do they get out of it? And what do they enjoy the most? Definitely the end where they finally tried their, tried their own game, uh, even if it was the most simple game in the world. Learning to overcome challenges and having a working program. The students love to show their parents what they have made by themselves. They're very proud of, proud, they are very proud if they get their ideas done and improve their skills. The feeling of accomplishment when completing a game and watching others play the games that they've built. Just being able to create an original game, then watch their peers play the game is such a high for these kids to be able to say, I made that, is a really go boost. Creating games, making rapid progress in a short span of time. Thinking up new games, brainstorming is normally a pain to get students to do, but not when it involves games design and seeing their ideas take shape. Looking at the different styles of teaching at age 12 to 14 school curriculums are mainly focused on teaching students the fundamentals of coding and giving them engaging ways to enable them to put it into practice. And to this end, we created space bubbles for an education environment. There is a list of everything included in the materials. Space bubbles is a D&D project-based scheme of work where students work on one project over the course of eight one-hour lessons with 30 minutes being spent on coding and 30 minutes being spent on making the Space Bubbles game. Over these lessons, students are taught how to program by recreating their own version of the game Space Bubbles using video tutorials aimed at children aged 12 to 14, but can be used for older and younger and developed by Terry Watts, who is a, te a teacher and formerly a games designer. In the home learning environment, the lessons can be taught using Zoom and the students can progress using the video tutorials. They are able to export their game, uh, submit their game for evaluation by the teacher and complete their self-assessment forms. Each lesson has its own starter project. So if a student gets stuck, they can move on quickly. The curriculum topics covered include programming key concepts and principles, sequencing, selection statements and iteration, modeling the state and behavior of real world problems and physical systems, for example, making hot chocolate in the homeworks, and also contains a teacher review, self review and peer review. Moving now to video tutorials, which don't require a teacher to lead. This is our first consumer tutorial where students can learn on their own. This game is based on the classic asteroid game for beginners with many of the same mechanics as space bubbles. It covers both drag and drop and game maker language. So you can make the game in D&D and then remake it in GML. This is an official tutorial made by one of our community educators, Friendly Cosmonaut. So it is a different teaching style and includes an intro to game maker. The focus is, uh, <clears throat> sorry, the focus of this is to retain engagement through quick wins. 
you create your ship and get it moving within a few minutes before layering on additional game mechanics. Space Mods is built on Space Rocks. It also has a D&D and GML version. This additional content can also support students who need more help with the Space Bubbles extension and challenge tasks. Uh, these include power-ups, enemy ships, cameras, parallax or layered backgrounds for a 3D depth perspective, and visual effects such as particles and screen shape. There's a nice comment here from a user who felt that they were able to start making their own modifications to their game once they completed space mods. Breakthrough is a brick breaker game. It's taught for both GML and D&D, so students have the opportunity to develop the game in both methods. Around half of all projects being worked on in Game Maker are D&D, so there's no need to go to GML until you're ready. This is a totally different style of game, but the teaching is still at beginner level. Fire Jump is our latest tutorial. It is a drag and drop full game tutorial that introduces the basics of Game Maker's D&D system to create your own infinite platformer game. It comes as part of a four part tutorial series. Uh, please check it out after the webinar, click the link for more information and on site there is a link to play the web version of the game too. From the age of 15 to 16, we see the school curriculum focusing more on the creative application of coding. While project-based tutorials can set a theme and see how your students interpret it based on a marking scheme, the scheme could include uh, the following, interpretation of the theme, complexity or functionality used, playability, coding practice and creativity. Here are some resources for tools, artwork, audio, et cetera, that can be used as the basis for game creation. The Global Game Jam resources at the bottom are particularly noteworthy as they run the world's largest game jam each year, which takes place over three days. We also have blog articles that can provide inspiration from our team and pro developers alike. These can fit in well with the Space Bubbles and Space Rocks tutorials. They cover a wide variety of topics from planning, creating game mechanics, how to's, getting your game finished and how to make your code look neat and tidy and much more. You'll never be short of inspiration and guides for how to do things on YouTube. Here are just a sample of games and tutorials that can be found easily when you're looking on YouTube. All Game Maker Studio 2 features and settings are fully documented with examples in our online manual. And one problem with home learning students aged 15 to 16 is that group learning and projects can be more difficult to achieve. Uh, to assist, we have official tools video tutorials that are accessible through YouTube, through our YouTube channel. These take, uh, these take you through all the tools, editors, and how they work. Watch this space as we're always updating and adding more video content to this area. If you're looking for a more expansive set of game tutorials, this set of video tutorials start at beginner level using Game Maker language and then progress to an intermediate. Uh, it also connects to the author's own video platform and tutorials on YouTube. And this is Sean Spaulding, uh, and this is Sean Spaulding's platformer, which links to ours and contains a further 27 videos on YouTube. We have, a new, we have new education materials that we have just released. This is a more detailed GML-based game design tutorial for artists and people starting to learn game design at college or university, where you are guided on how to make a game called Little Town, an adventure playing game created by university lecturer and game designer, Ben Rivers. Ben teaches game design for the Faculty of Design at OCAD Ontario. These materials include, uh, a, these materials include a detailed booklet and video tutorials, which students can use to make the game uh, in eight one hour lessons. There are about nine hours of video, uh, we also provide guidance for educators, educators on how to teach it and how to evaluate progress. Little Town utilizes more advanced functionality within Game Maker, including our sequences animation functionality. All licenses provided have access to sequences. For older students aged 16 plus, there is also the facility for them to engage with our community for help with their projects using our forum, the GMC or Game Maker community. We have three types of licenses available, and these can be purchased through Studica. We have Educator, which contains our desktop. We have Educator Plus, which contains desktop and web. This is exclusive to Studica, as several schools uh, they work with have requested the capability to export to HTML5. And then we have Achiever, which is desktop, mobile, web, UWP, and now PlayStation. There are one-year and two-year options. 
The seats are concurrent use licenses, so they can be used for multiple classes. GameMaker can be used on PC and Mac, not yet on Chromebook, but due to overwhelming demand uh, from the, these webinars, we are definitely looking into it and actually developing it. As can be seen from our recent survey in early November, at that time, only 5% of teachers were unaffected by COVID. Uh, as, as a consequence, we have provided support to our users throughout COVID, currently until December 31st, 2021, all seat licenses can be used by five students simultaneously. So 30 seats used in a computer lab can be used simultaneously by 150 students at home. Hopefully we won't need to extend beyond December because it will be a safe place, but we will look at this nearer the time and see if measures need to be extended. Privacy in education. Um, the teacher acts as a seat manager. They receive one perpetual educator desktop seat uh, that they can use to investigate game maker and understand setup. The seats are entirely anonymous, including the usernames and passwords, which are randomly generated. No PII is collected. Uh, there is more information in our privacy policy and a specific section on our, uh, on our approach to education within our privacy policy. We're also approved for use by the educationframework.com. As a thank you for attending our webinar and making it to the end, you are eligible to receive a free teacher license. Christy will send uh, you a link and click the button uh, or, or click the button when, uh, when we send you the slides for a step-by-step -step instructions. And I think it's now uh, time for any Q and A. Stuart, um, let's see what we have here. Um, how can the students download GameMaker without creating an account? Right, okay, so uh, we have uh, actually, that we have a link on our website on the education page that allows students to just download GameMaker. Um, so then with the accounts that you create within the seat manager system, you can, uh, they can then log in with those anonymously. Great, and then um, as a teacher, um, can the seats still be used for um, like after school activities? Yes, I mean, fundamentally, once you've got the license and you create a seat for a computer lab, you can use it whenever you want. Um, it's not just restrict, it's not time restricted to the, the hours of the day. So if you want to use it for a computer club after school, then um, they're your licenses to use within that, in that structure. Okay, perfect. Um, that looks like the end of the questions we have in the chat. Okay, so um, I'll hand over to you, uh, Christy. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Stuart, for that presentation, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, if you would like more information or would you like a quote or anything else that we can help you with, Studica will be happy to assist. You can email us at info at studica.com. And again, I'll be sending that email with a link so you can get the free educator license and other information. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a great day.